Hello and welcome. If you're new to my channel, my name's Christina, and in this week's video, I really wanted to share this curbside fine vanity makeover. But the challenge I had for myself was, can I do this for under $40? I'm gonna walk you through all the details, so let's jump into the video. This was a free Art Deco desk found by The Curb. So took a look at it, it was in pretty good condition. Looks like it's got some kind of diluted paint stain on it, but I think with a really good cleaning and do something with the hardware, I think there's something really fun we could do with this. So to clean pieces, I always use a degreaser dish soap. Once I remove the hardware, I also like to clean those with a steel wool and some dish soap before I do anything. So I wanted to challenge myself by not buying anything, only using what I have and figure out ways to cost cut in order to give this whole vanity a makeover. So I'm going to wash this whole thing down with the dish soap and I'm going to clean the insides and the backsides and the drawers. I love to use the Craylon. Color Max Paint and Primer in the Flat Black for hardware. This is perfect coverage and it doesn't rub off, so it works really well on old hardware just to give it a nice fresh makeover. I've had that can of spray paint for a long time and I've gotten many, many uses out of it, so $10 goes a long way. I'll be using the redesigned by Prima decoupage. I already have this on stock, but you can find decoupage papers in a lot of craft stores as well as you could even use napkins. But another really good place is the Zazzle.com. I'll have that in the description box below. You can get very inexpensive decoupage paper. I already have the Athenian black in the chalk paint, but you can get the sample size for $6 to $12 in many chalk paint products. A little sample size will be more than enough to cover this project. You really don't need any special tools or brushes, just anything you already have on hand. Even a really good, simple, synthetic household paintbrush. Because this piece has a lot of kind of nicks and dings into it, what I find the best coverage is to use two thin coats of the chalk paint or a flat matte paint would also do the trick as well. I really like to use chalk paint just because it's very thick and it does have excellent coverage. I find doing the two thin coats really does a beautiful job and this way my paint doesn't clump up into the small corners and areas and does a beautiful finish. With my first coat I used straight up paint. For the second coat I want to show you how I missed out some water to help even out the paint to give you a much smoother and slicker finish. What was super fantastic about this curbside find is it actually came with the frame and a full mirror that was in really good condition. So just like the desk, I'm going to clean it really well with the dish soap and then I'm going to apply the exact same flat matte Athenian black chalk paint all around the frame. But I actually wanted to add a little bit of texture to this frame so that way it will actually be a little bit more cohesive and kind of run in style with the decoupage papers that I'm going to put on. I'll probably go back later and add some paint inside the drawers. But for now, what I'm going to be using is the Mod Podge. I'm just going to use a foam brush and my decoupage papers and cover the drawer fronts. I have just enough decoupage paper to cover, but I may actually have to align my pattern so that way it's cohesive with all of the drawers. I make sure I have a nice even coat of the Mod Podge before I apply the decoupage paper and then just give it a nice smooth run over just to make sure there's no bumps or bubbles. 
I'll be using an X-Acto knife just to cut around the edges of the drawer, but you could also use scissors. I'm going to show you a little trick that I'm going to use just to make sure the edges are nice and smooth and completely even with each drawer front. The really nice thing about using decoupage on old pieces of furniture, especially ones that have veneer like this one, is you don't have to go around and do a lot of hard labor and you can have beautiful coverage and create a whole different style to the furniture. The other thing I like to do once I've done the decoupage is to seal the top of it also with the Mod Podge because I find that this helps it keep adhered both from the front to the back and this also seals it. So it also makes it wipeable and cleanable after you're finished. Here's a little example of a chipped veneer but with the decoupage paper you're not even going to see it. So I had to be a little bit careful how I cut the decoupage papers because I was kind of concerned that I might not have enough with a full sheet. So what I'll do is I'll match up the prints with the leftovers I have and make sure that the actual prints match and then I'll just cut it in exact position just to cover the last drawer. The other amazing product that you could use for a decoupage is also wrapping paper. There is such an amazing selection out there and so many colors and designs to choose from. When I was working with this decoupage paper, I noticed it actually had highlights and lowlights. So with a previous project I just completed, and I actually have the video description in the description box below, I'm gonna use the leftover glaze that I use for this furniture project. So I have kind of a chocolate brown and a light cream color that I'm gonna use on the mirror frame. Now that the Mod Podge is completely dry, I'm going to use a 220 sandpaper disc to go around all the edges of the decoupage around the drawers to smooth it nice and seamless. You'll want to go on about a 45 degree angle to get a nice seamless edge using a sandpaper disc or you could even use a sanding block. So this is the leftover glaze mix. So this is a four part glaze to one part paint color. But you could use even acrylic paints that you find at the dollar store and mix in a little bit of water to get a very similar effect. So I'm just going to use the glaze color mix that I have. I'm just going to go around and lightly dab. The rag itself is actually just going to give a really neat textured print to it. So it's just playing around giving it a different textured style and I'm just trying to put the same kind of color prints into the frame of the mirror that kind of would be a little cohesive with the decoupage print. In order to get this kind of impression, you wouldn't necessarily have to use a glaze mix. It's just something I already have, but you could just use a paint and maybe just dilute it with a little bit of water to get a very similar effect. And like I mentioned, you could get those little acrylic samples at the dollar store and if you're just trying to match it in, it's just a great way to add some texture to the frame of this mirror. I'm not really even having a plan with it. I'm just kind of playing around with what I have left over. And if you get a little too thick, you can always go back with a little bit of that black paint just to downtone it a little bit. The actual mirror covers quite a portion of this frame, but like I mentioned, I just wanted to go around the frame to give in that little bit of a color match to the decoupage. Each coat of paint I put on, it's really important to make sure that the first coat is completely dry before you put on your second coat. And just by adding a little bit of some mist water, it really helps level the paint. So this will give you a nice smooth, even coverage. And this will apply to any paint product that you're using for your makeover. 
If you don't have a mist spray bottle of any kind, you could always just use an old Windex bottle. Just clean it out and just add straight water to it. Using the black tone really camouflages a lot of the little knocks and dings in this old piece. When I decoupage over my hardware holes, I like to just make a little tiny hole. So I'm just going to use a little hairpin just to give a little poke through the paper. So when I go to put back in the screws and the hardware, this just makes it a little bit easier and I don't tear the paper. And I always recommend to go through the back and just give a little punch to the front. So to keep my cost really low, under my $40, I'm actually going to be using the Mod Podge in matte finish because this is actually a water-based sealer. So you can actually use this on your projects to seal your paint and your decoupage. So I bought some foam brushes and you can pick those up even for about a dollar. And I bought three bottles of the Mod Podge so that way I could seal the entire desk. But to make sure that your coverage is nice and even, I would even recommend to do two coats over with the Mod Podge to seal your project so that way everything is nice and even. So very similar to like a lacquer, it's going to go on with a little bit of a milky color but it will dry completely clear. I prefer the matte finish with the Mod Podge but it also comes in a sheen finish as well. I like to seal my projects with a matte finish because there's so many little imperfections with the old furniture pieces. This deflects the light so that way the sheen will pick it up when it's in the light whereas the matte finish won't pick up the light. The sealer will also help enrich the color that you're using. If you don't want to use the Mod Podge, you can always get a little sample size of the Furniture Clear Wax to seal your project. Thank you so much for watching this week's video and I'm really looking forward to sharing so many more fun DIYs with you soon. Until then, take care.